السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. All praise is due to Allah. We seek His guidance, His mercy, His forgiveness, His assistance. We seek refuge in Allah from the evil within ourselves and from the evil of our actions. Whomsoever Allah guides, there is no one to lead us straight. And whomsoever Allah leaves to go astray, there is no one to guide him. I bear witness there is no one worthy of worship except Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad is his servant and his messenger. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him and upon his family and his companions and all those who follow them until the last day. <laughs> Beloved brothers and sisters of Islam, during these days and the season that has come, we find that there are a number of Muslims who they partake in certain practices that are related to the season. And when I say practices, I mean very specific practices that are related to what uh, traditionally uh, the, the Christians do during this time 
and during the, the season of, of Christmas. And sometimes we find that Muslims will do similar things when the time of Halloween comes, where they allow their children to partake in the very specific and particular uh, rites or actions that are done during these times. And this, as Muslims for us, we have to make sure that we keep the identity of our children firm. And that we don't blur the lines between our faith traditions. Yes, we understand that we have respect towards uh, our, our fellow uh, brothers and sisters in humanity, whether they be Christian or Jews or whomever so they may be. And we respect the fact that they have their faith traditions and we respect the fact that they have their rights that they perform. But this does not mean that it is something that we ourselves should take upon uh, to do within our own houses. And so I've heard of Christians, uh, Muslims, for example, that they'll have you know, the, the trees within their houses and they'll decorate the trees and they'll place the, the gifts under the trees and, and whatnot. And they don't differentiate themselves from the actions of their, their Christian neighbors. And this teaches the children to, to blur the lines between their, their identities. And we need to be very careful about this. And if, if you look at the history behind these particular acts, we know that they actually go back even before the time of, of Christianity and Christendom. And that they actually have roots in pagan rituals. And we know that for a fact, historically speaking, whether it's for uh, the, the, some of the things that are done in Christmas or whether it's for Halloween. There is a, uh, I recommend you to, to watch this uh, with your children, but there is a, a video and a lecture that is given by a scholar who was here uh, just last month, uh, Dr. Abdullah Hakim Quick, and he talks about the hidden history behind Christmas. This is something that for us, it's a learning opportunity if we don't know these types of things, but to understand that, that as Muslims, the Prophet ﷺ used to differentiate himself and the Muslims in terms of actions from those uh, who were of, of other faith, just so that our identity is solid and firm and that we don't engage in things that could compromise or, or go against the principles of our faith in terms of the belief in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to make sure that we teach our children firmness in their identity. Now this does not mean that if we have Christian neighbors, that we, we, we disrespect them or that we insult them or, or something of that sort when it comes to their practices and we say to them, oh, by the way, did you know this and that about what you're doing? We don't go in that direction simply because this is for them to, to, to know and to understand. But rather what it is that we can do is we can share what we have in common in terms, for example, of some of the statements that we have within our own tradition of Isa alayhi salam. We believe in Isa. We believe in Isa alayhi salam uh, in, in, in ways that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned in the Quran and has made clear this is the haq of Isa alayhi salam. And so when it talks about the virgin birth of Isa or when it talks about his capacity to raise the dead or cure the blind or uh, to, to, to heal the sick, we believe in all of these miracles of Isa alayhi salam that were given to him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by the leave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the sake of showing people proof he is a messenger of Allah, that he is a messenger of God. And so it's interesting that when we look within our own tradition, we actually find statements of Isa alayhi salam in hadith collection. There are a number of different statements uh, that are attributed to Isa alayhi salam. And in some of these statements, the Prophet sallam, as we'll show you today, he even reiterated um, and said the same statement and that they are considered as a hadith that are found in the uh, collections of a hadith. And so if we want to be able to, to draw bridges between ourselves and our Christian uh, neighbors, then this is one of the ways in which we can do so. It's not about partaking in the specific or particular acts or rites or rituals that they do that, that have a, a problematic origin from our perspective and that there's something for us that we, we, we shouldn't uh, involve ourselves in for the sake of, of understanding that these things that you know we, we have to de demarcate and delineate our limits and, and boundaries and so that we have an understanding. We're not blurring the lines between our faith traditions. And this is something that is important. Yes, we have commonalities, and we can focus on these commonalities,
But at the same time, we also have differences, and we should not simply do away with these types of differences. And this is something that we, we need to be able to teach our children very much so, and, and be very, uh, uh, to be able to give them that solid foundation be firm and strong about this so that we can give them that solid foundation as in terms of their identity as Muslims and, and as people uh, of, uh, who, who follow the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi and who follow all of the Prophets because all of the Prophets are, are mentioned in the Quran as being Muslims. There is a particular tradition that I want to relate to you today that is mentioned in the Muwatta of Imam Malik Rahimahullah. It's also mentioned by Imam Ahmed in his hadith collection as well as in his book on Zuhd and it's also mentioned uh, by uh, other uh, uh, scholars in, in the, the, their collections of, of Athar and Ahadith uh, that go back to the Prophet or the Sahaba or, or other Prophets. And this particular tradition, this is something that we can use as a, as in order to show people the, the similarities that we have, uh, or, or Christians in terms of our belief of Isa alayhi salam, that we have statements of Isa alayhi salam within our own faith tradition. And we just want to take a few moments to reflect on, on one of these uh, traditions in particular and to see how this applies to us. And that both Muslims and Christians would be able to apply to this tradition of Isa alayhi salam and that this is part of, of who we are and it's part of our identity as the Muslims. Akhbarna Abu Musa'ib. Haddathna Malik. Ay Malik ibn Anas, rahimahullah. Annahu balagahu, anna Isa ibn Maryam alayhi salam kana yaqul. La tukthiru al-kalama bi ghayri dhikrillah. Fataqsuwa kulubukum. Fa inna al-qalb al-qasiya ba'idun min Allah. ولكن لا تعلمون ولا تنظروا في ذنوب الناس كأنكم أرباب وانظروا في ذنوبكم كأنكم عبيد فإنما الناس مبتلا ومعافا فارحموا أهل البلاء واحمدوا الله على العافية In this tradition that Imam Malik and others have narrated that Isa ibn Maryam alayhi salam, he said, do not speak much without remembering Allah. For by doing so, you harden your hearts. And surely a hard heart is distant from God, from Allah, though you are unaware. Do not look at the faults of others like lords. But rather, look at your own faults, like servants. In truth, humanity is comprised of only two types of people. Those who are afflicted, and those who are sound. So, have mercy, show mercy towards those who are afflicted, and praise Allah, praise God, for soundness and well-being. Now this is a deep tradition when we look at and we consider these words of Isa alayhi salam. What do the scholars say about this particular narration of Isa alayhi salam? Ibn Abd al -Bar, who made a commentary on Imam Wattah's Imam uh, 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 Malik uh, in his istithqaf. He has the following to say, Qala Abu Umar, ay Ibn Abd al -Bar, Hada indi afdaru kalamin qila fi ma'nahu. أو من أفضل الكلام قيل أجمعه للخير وأدلك عليه ولقد أحسن القائل ارحم الناس جميعا فهم أبناء جنسك ابغي للناس من الخير كما تبغي لنفسك ابن عبد البار رحمه الله he mentions in his commentary on this hadith um, of uh, Imam Malik's uh, Muatta. He mentions in this commentary, in this particular narration of Isa, Isa, he says, these are from the best of words that, that I have heard in terms of, of their meaning. Uh, and it is from the best of words that brings together so much goodness, so much khair, and that it directs people towards doing good. And that he, he, he quotes then uh, a, some poetry in which the poet says, Have mercy on all people because they are the same as you in terms of they're from your jinns. They're human beings just like you are. And that love for, now, for people, desire for people 
what it is of goodness that you desire for yourself. Desire for people of goodness what it is that you desire for yourself. Another commentary on this hadith or on this athar from Isa alayhi salam. قال الإمام الباجي رحمه الله قول عيسى بن مريم عليه السلام لا تكثر الكلام بغير ذكر الله تعالى فتقسو قلوبكم يريد والله أعلم أن كثرة الكلام بغير ذكر الله عز وجل لغة لغة أي كلام لا فيه إفادة كلام فارغ وإن كان منه المباح فقد يكون منه أي محبور فالغالب عليه ما تقسو به القلوب and so Imam al-Baji, he said in commenting on the beginning of this tradition that don't speak too much without making mention of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or else this will harden the hearts. Why is that? Because most of what it is that people say, even if there are things that we say that's permissible, but when we speak too much it also includes that which is problematic, which is that which we're warned against saying. And so the more that we speak without mentioning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then it becomes easier to slip into that which is problematic. And by doing so, this is what actually hardens the heart. But we don't realize it. And that's why he said, But you don't know, you're not aware. This is what you're doing to yourself and doing to your heart. And when we're referring to the hearts being hardened, what does that mean? That, فَلَا يَنْفَعُهَا عِلَّةٌ وَلَا يَثْبُتُ فِيهَا حِجْمَةٌ That when our hearts become hardened, then if we hear a, an admonition, if we hear things that are supposed to give us, teach us a lesson, that they're supposed to be a hibra or a ima for us, then it doesn't penetrate into our hearts because the hearts are hardened. And it won't allow wisdom to set within the heart. That it won't allow for a person to have hikmah enter into their hearts. Why? Because they're hard. They're hard. And so the hearts need to be softened in this respect. And so then he continues, Isa alayhi salam. And when he said that Allah, that the hard-hearted people, they're far from Allah, meaning far from his rahmah, meaning far from his look, from his kindness. And we don't want to be these people. Anyone who has a hard heart, they're distant from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a preventative for having the mercy and the kindness and the gentleness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descend upon His servants. If a person has a hard heart. And then he continues. Look at, don't look at the sins of people as if you're their overseer, as if you're their Lord. Because when a person looks at others, then they end up forgetting about themselves. And when it's talking about you know, the sins or the shortcomings or the faults of others, that you don't get any reward when you look at the faults of others. Nor are you punished for the faults of others. That says it was it to Musa al Nobody bears the burden of another person. And so it's, it's pointless. And in fact, it can actually bring about harm to yourself if you're too busy looking at the faults of others and you forget about yourself. But rather look at your own faults. Rather focus on your own faults as if you're a servant. Knowing that you have a Lord who is above you, subhanahu wa ta'ala, who sees and hears and knows everything that you do. That's where the focus should be, is within ourselves. And that we look at our own shortcomings, we look at our own faults. And that is what's going to benefit us. Why? Because that's where we will be able to gain reward when we treat ourselves. That's what's going to uh, allow us to, to, to turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in repentance. That's what's going to allow us to prevent the anger or the displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descending upon us. It's when we focus on ourselves, not when we focus on the faults of other people. There's so much wisdom in what he had to say, alayhi salam. And this is based on the hadith as well. The beginning of the, the statement of Isa alayhi salam is actually narrated as a hadith in the collection of Imam al-Tirmidhi. And Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا تكثر الكلام بغير ذكر الله فإن كثرة الكلام بغير ذكر الله قسوة للقل وإن أبعد الناس من الله القلب الخاص وهذا الحديث حديث حسن that Imam al-Tirmidhi narrated from Ibn Umar that the Messenger of Allah said do not talk too much 
without making remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because excessive talking without remembrance of Allah hardens the heart. And indeed, the furthest of people from Allah is the hard heart. And so when we look at this and we understand that there is depth in these traditions, there is depth and meaning in these statements, and that these are things that, that we can apply. And so that when we focus on ourselves and not focus on others, then we're concerned about our obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's what's going to lead us in the direction that is going to be towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he concludes his statement. People are of two types. Mubtala wa mu'afa. Mubtala wa mu'afa. That there are people who go through tribulation. Now this can mean tribulation in terms of the noob. That it could be in terms of they have sins. And they have tribulation in terms of sins and many sins. And then there are people who are mu'afa. That they, they have lesser sins. Nobody's perfect. But there are some people who do more sins than others. But it can also mean people who are in a state of tribulation in other aspects. And so the scholars mentioned it could be in terms of referring to sins. People have bala. Because sins are a bala. And people have afiyah. So they're mu'afa from committing sins that they're sound or they're protected from committing certain sins. And this is the, what is the direction that, that we want to go to. But then also in terms of those who, who have other ibtila, whether it be in their health, or whether it be in terms of their wealth, or whether it be in terms of, of their family, right? And he gives us advice. Those people who are afflicted, have mercy upon them. Those people who are afflicted, have mercy upon them. Treat them kindly. Be merciful towards them. And those who have afiyah, praise Allah for afiyah. Alhamdulillah ala afiyah. Right? That we say praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all forms of soundness and well-being. Whether it be that we, we don't have many sins and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify us from our sins and to lead us in a direction in which we don't go towards sins and that, that we don't have sins. This is afiyah. This is a form of, of well-being and, and soundness. And this is what Isa is, is teaching. Is that praise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, praise Him for, for giving you health, for giving you soundness, and for keeping you away from sin. But that's why that focus has to be on ourselves. Are we of those people? And so when we reflect on the statement of Isa and we share this with our Christian neighbors, then we'll be able to draw that bridge between ourselves and them to say that, that yes, we do believe in Isa. Yes, we have similarities in terms of our belief of Isa. Yes, there are differences. But when we look at the similarities, then that's what's going to help build those bridges. And we acknowledge the differences. We have to talk about the differences as well and acknowledge them because that's what makes them Christian and that's what makes us Muslims. That, that we don't blur the lines between our identities. But we are, are able to come together and to understand that we have a lot that is in common and that's what's going to, to, to help us live with one another so that they, people don't think that we're out to get them or people don't think that, that we're, 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 we're totally different from them that, that, that we become marginalized and that we marginalize ourselves. No, we can, we can mix with the people and let them know who we are but make your identity firm and know what it is that, that we, we believe in as Muslims and, and teach our children. أقول قول هذا وأستغفر الله العظيم دين ملك الإسلام المسلمين ملك الإسلام فاستغفر الله إنه هو الله الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلاة والتمام والتسليم على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أختتم بقولين من سيدنا عيسى عليه السلام القول الأول مروي في حلية الأولياء لأبي نعيم أبي نعيم الأصفهاني والثاني من كتاب الزهد للإمام أحمد بن محمد في حلية الأولياء عن مالك قال قال عيسى بن مريم عليه السلام خشية الله وحب الفردوس يباعدان من زهرة الدنيا أي من الأشياء اللي تفتن الشخص في الدنيا ويوري ثاني الصبر على المشقة والقول الثاني رواه الإمام أحمد في الزهد عن مغيرة عن الشعب قال عيسى بن مريم عليه الصلاة والسلام 
ليس الإحسان أن تحسن إلى من أحسن إليك تلك مكافأة بالمعروف ولكن الإحسان أن تحسن إلى من أساء I'll conclude with two other statements of Isa alayhi salam from two different collections. One is from the collection of uh, Abu Na'im al-Asfahani in his Hiliyat al-Awliya, and the other is from Imam Ahmad in his book Al-Zuhd. The first tradition, Isa alayhi salam, he once said that the khashya of Allah, the fear with reverence of Allah, and the word khashya in the Arabic language also means hope. And it also means knowledge, to have knowledge of something or to have hope in something. And so all of these words actually combine within the word khashya in the Arabic language. Having khashya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and love of al firdaus love of the highest paradise. This is what makes far from an individual the splendors of this world, the fleeting splendors of this world. It's what pushes these things away from an individual. That when you have khasha of Allah, it's a reverence of Allah, a fear of Allah, a hope in Allah, knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And at the same time, you have a love for a firdaus. Who here does not want to enter into a firdaus, the highest level of paradise? Love of these things, and having, or love of firdaus and having khasha of Allah, it pushes the splendors of the world away from you, away from your heart. And then he continued and he said, and it also brings about patience. That when you go through hardship and tribulation, then a person has perseverance. A person has patience. From having khasha of Allah and from having love of uh, Jannah al Firdaus. This is one of the statements of Isa alayhi salam. There's a lot of depth in that. And then another statement, uh, Isa alayhi salam, this is mentioned in Imam Ahmad's uh, Kitab al Zuhd, and Isa ibn Maryam, that he said, virtuous actions is not doing or consistent doing good. To, to, to someone who has done good to you. So if somebody does do good to you and you do it back to them, that's not ihsan. That's not virtuous action. That's just simply repaying a favor that they have done for you. But rather, al ihsan, virtuous action, consists in doing good to those who have wronged you. Virtuous actions consist in doing good to those who have wronged you. That's ihsan. That's the definition of ihsan. The true definition of Ahsan, because this is about going above and beyond what people commonly acknowledge as being good. That somebody does wrong to you, but you still do good to them. <coughs> this is the, the nature of our Prophet ﷺ himself, that he would never repay a, a bad deed with another bad deed. Ifa'u billatihi Ahsan, is what Allah tells us in the Quran. Repel with that which is better. This is the manhaj al nubuwa This is the methodology of the Prophets of our Prophet and of Isa alayhi salam and of all of the Prophets. And so when we reflect and we share these types of traditions uh, with others and those who are our Christian neighbors to say these are the traditions of Isa from within the Islamic tradition, then we're able to see those commonalities and we're able to work together towards the benefit of all people. In Allah wa malaikatu wa sallam wa ala nabi. Ya ayyuhu al-ladhina amin wa sallam alayhi wa sallam wa taslima. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ala Muhammad. Kama salli ta'ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim. Tubarak ala Muhammadin wa ala ala Muhammad. Kama barak ta'ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim. Fil alameen inna ka hamidun majid. Allahumma khfil al-mu'minina wa al-mu'minat. Al-muslimina wa al-muslimat. Al-ahya'i min hum al-awad. Inna ka ya Rabbana sami'un qaribun mujibu al-da'wad. Wa Rabbana adhalamna anfusina wa illa taghfil lana wa tahamna lana kunanna min al-fasir. اللهم ارحم موتانا وموت المسلمين واشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين وانصر اخواننا المستضعفين المظلومين في كل مكان انصرهم في مشارق الارض وفي مغاربها يا رب العالمين ربنا هب لنا من ازواجنا وذرياتنا قرة اعين واجعلنا من المتقين اماما اللهم رد المسلمين شباب وفتيات المسلمين الى دينك ردا جميلا اللهم ردنا وجميع المسلمين الى دينك ردا جميلا اللهم ارد المسجد أقصى إلى رحاب المسلمين ردا جميلا وارزقنا الصلاة فيه قبل الممات برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذابا عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإنتاء ذي القربى وينهى الشاء والمنكر والبغي علمنا لكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروا الله على أن يكون لكم الله يعلم